Hello, my name is Beth. And I'm Arielle. And today we'll be talking to you about what are speech, language and communication needs, which you'll refer to as SLCN, and how we can create a quality communication environment. So we are both speech and language therapists working across Barking and Dagenham, including maybe in your school. So thank you for joining us today. So just an outline of what we're going to be talking about. First, we're going to go over what are the typical milestones we expect our children to be achieving with their language. Then we'll look at what SLCN looks like and how this links to the other areas of development for children. Then we're going to be talking about how you can improve children's communication skills by creating a communication friendly environment, what a communication order is, who you can go to for help, and also we'll include some helpful resources at the end. Okay, so let's get stuck right into it. First, we're gonna talk about when we expect children to be achieving language milestones. In order to do this, we first have to understand how we develop language. So you can have a look here at the communication pyramid. So you can see that right at the bottom of the pyramid is attention and listening. And then up the top, we have how we say sounds um, and the language that we use. So a lot of the time, parents and teachers will come and say to us, oh, I'm really worried because this child isn't using very many words. And we might set targets right at the bottom of this pyramid because it's really important that a child can attend and listen in order for them to develop their language. So first, we need to develop our attention and listening. And from that solid foundation, we grow the other skills, skills like play and interaction. So can the child make friends? Are they excited around other people? Do they enjoy pretend play? All of these skills then support a child to understand language. Once they're understanding language, they'll begin to use that themselves. And right at the tip of the pyramid, one of the latest developing skills is their ability to say sounds accurately. So let's have a look at typical communication milestones. So first, here are the milestones for early years age children. So children aged sort of two to five years. OK, so we would expect a child of two to three years to be able to follow simple instructions, answer basic questions such as what and who, and use short phrases with two to three words. We would also expect the child to be understood by familiar adults. For children aged three to four years, we would expect a child to be able to focus for longer periods on adult led activities, understand longer instructions and use three to four word sentences in simple conversations. At this age, we would expect children to be understood by all adults. For children aged four to five years, we would expect children to be understanding and following most instructions with little adult support. We'd expect them to tell short stories and to maintain conversations. And now we're going to think about typical speech and language milestones for primary school age children. So by reception age, we would expect children to understand more complex instructions, use describing words and connectives and sentences and retell stories. By year three, we would expect children to follow three part instructions, ask questions, predict what might happen next and take turns in conversations. And by this age, we would expect children to be using language that their peers use too, such as slang words. By year five, we would expect children to understand and use language for a variety of purposes, such as to infer meaning, reason their opinions and ideas, and make predictions, as well as summarize, clarify, complement and negotiate. And by year seven, a child should be joining in discussions about a range of topics using complex grammar and sentence structure. We might be expecting them to tell amusing stories. We'd also expect them to recognise when others don't understand and try to explain themselves. So now that we've thought about our typical milestones, let's think about what speech, language and communication needs are. So speech, language and communication needs can describe a range of communication difficulties. Speech, language and communication needs, or SLCN, may include um, difficulties with interacting with others. So this might be difficulties understanding nonverbal cues, rules of communication, and difficulties in using language in different ways, 
for example, to question, clarify or describe things. They may be having difficulties understanding language, the difficulties following routines or instructions and understanding and answering questions. We might be having difficulties using language, so verbally, um, on, so words and sentences and non-verbally, such as gestures, facial expressions and eye contact. They might be having difficulties producing speech sounds accurately, so the actual sounds that make up the words. Um, they might have a stammer or they might have voice difficulties such as hoarseness or a loss of voice. And not all children will experience these difficulties or all of these difficulties. And children with SLCN may have strengths and needs across the different areas. Next, we're going to have a look at how speech, language and communication needs are linked to children's wider development and how they impact the rest of their life. So the links between SLCN and development. We can see here that it's really important to understand the links between social disadvantage and SLCN. So evidence shows us that poor communication skills are closely linked with social disadvantage. And this may impact upon the amount of opportunities and resources children have for learning. So we learn through lots of different experiences. And if those experiences are limited due to social disadvantage, that's going to have a knock-on effect on learning and also language development. We know that research shows us that 17% of children across the UK live in relative poverty, with 19% of these children living in absolute poverty. So now that we know there's a high rate of children living with poverty in the UK, and we know that there's a well-evidenced link between SLCN and social disadvantage, as a service, we don't just work directly with children who are showing significant difficulties, but we also work at a universal and a targeted level to support all children so that we can have a positive impact on children's language development. So what is the impact of SLCN on our children? And why is it important for us to be supporting our children's language? So we know that children's ability to use their communication skills is linked to their outcomes, not only in school, but also later in life. So let's start with school. Let's think about educational outcomes. A child who has difficulty using their verbal language is also going to have difficulty understanding information that they need to learn and also demonstrating what they do know verbally and through writing. Such difficulties also go on to contribute to emotional well-being difficulties. It's so frustrating not being able to communicate yourself clearly, especially when it seems that everyone else can be doing this really, really easily. As we grow up and get to later in life, we see difficulties within employability. Communication difficulties can really affect us when we're going to job interviews and we're looking at the different jobs that might be suitable for our needs. As the last slide showed, social inequality is a big impact of SLCN and also can lead to SLCN. And also family history is really important. So we often see intergenerational cycles of SLCN having an impact on a child's communication skills. We learn so much language from our parents that if they have a limited language grounding to share with us, then that's going to have an onward impact on the language that we use. OK, so now that we've thought about what is SLCN and sort of the links between SLCN and development, um, we want to now have a think about how we can create a communication friendly environment for our children. OK, so one key universal recommendation we give to all parents and adults working with children is to think about the communication environment. It is widely recognised that the environment where children communicate and interact makes a significant difference to the opportunities for learning. The communication environment needs to encourage and promote quality communication. And the environment is key to supporting speaking and listening skills, emotional well-being, physical development and supporting children to engage with their learning. When we look at the communication environment at school, there are lots of aspects that can be supportive. 
but there's also aspects that could not be so helpful for a child's communication development. Some priority areas that we look at are noise levels, the role of the adult, how are visuals being used, and what kind of opportunities are there for children to communicate and interact? And there's lots more um, areas as well. So how can you get started thinking about these areas and how you can adjust your classroom to create as many learning opportunities for your children as possible? We know that setting a communication friendly environment up can feel like an overwhelming task, especially with everything else that you need to do and consider in your workday. Hopefully this cycle makes this seem a little bit less intimidating. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by looking at the set of standards and criteria and we've done that one for you so you don't need to worry about that too much. Once you've got those criteria we're going to go into the classroom and observe what's happening, observe what you're already doing, areas that you can improve and actually some areas that you might need a bit of help. So once you've seen what's working well and where you might need a little bit of support you can agree priority areas to implement change. So let's look at that set standards and criteria where we can start off. Okay, so here we can see the standards and criteria. What we've done is we've made a communication audit for you. So you can go through the different categories just like we saw in our language pyramid. Oh, just like we saw in our communication pyramid. And we've put in some helpful questions to make you think about actually how helpful your environment is, not just for some children, but for all children. So for example, is spoken language being supported using visual cues? Actually, how easy is it for children to understand and grow their language if all they're hearing is verbal language and it disappears right away? So we'd be using some visuals to support them. We then need to observe what is currently happening. So choose a time to go into the classroom. This may just be a 20 minute observation during a lesson. Remember, this is a snapshot observation which can be discussed with the team later. The class teaching team should be given time to go through the checklist and observe what they're achieving currently. Use the checklist to identify areas that are already working well and areas where you could support children's communication more. And you may find that you are using some strategies already for children with speech, language and communication needs. And these can be used for all of your children. Once you have made a mark against the observations points, discuss this with your team. So during your discussion, look at what is going well and areas which may need improvements. This will help you to focus on what you can do next. At this stage, you can agree on priority areas to implement change. If you feel at this stage that you need support, you could seek advice from other teachers, your SENCO, specialist speech and language staff within your school, or from your link speech and language therapist. On the right of the screen is an example of priority areas you may identify. In this example, the staff identified that they were already using visuals and rules to support children's understanding and attention. They identified that they were not yet aware of children's emotional and sensory needs. And based off this, the staff then identified five targets. And we have included who will support completion of target and when it will be completed by. This is because we know that when you're really busy, it can be very easy to forget to do these things, but they're very important. This helps us to stay accountable and help you identify if you need further support to reach your targets. For example, through support from your SENCO. OK, so next we're going to be talking about who you can go to for help with this. So if you're watching this as a parent or a carer, the best person to talk to is your child's teacher or the school SENCO. SENCO stands for Special Educational Needs Coordinator, and they'll know all about your child's care and how they can best be supported. If you're a teacher or a teaching assistant and you've been completing this communication audit, it can also be useful for you to go to your school SENCO to get some support and advice. However, if you're a SENCO or a teacher and your SENCO needs some more support answering your questions, then feel free to chat to your link speech and language therapist. That's why we're here and we're always happy to help.
Okay, so thank you so much for joining us for part A of identifying SLCN and carrying out a communication audit. And please join us for part B, where we will look at individual pupils and target settings. And if you stay on this video, we have some resource links for you to take a look at.